100 years ago, last month, as of the making of this video, John Gresham Machen wrote his famous book, Christianity and Liberalism. This is a book that he wrote from a Presbyterian perspective. It was a response to what was going on in the Presbyterian Church uh, in the USA. Uh, as you watch this video, all links to books that are mentioned in this video will be provided down below. Um, David B. Garner, in the introduction to this book, wrote, Christianity and liberalism is, among other things, a leadership book. It leads us to see the Christian faith in its exclusive, life-giving, freedom-granting beauty. And so that's the book we're going to be reviewing today. Um, if you're new, let me invite you and welcome you to Petra Publications. My name is Davis, and here on this channel, I basically just review Reformed Christian books, and on occasion I may put out music or review some book that is not explicitly Christian, um, just as the Lord leads me to do so. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, I welcome you to subscribe and like this video. I put a lot of work and time and effort into these, and so I really appreciate uh, all of you who are subscribed, and uh, thank you very much. Um, so this book, Christianity and Liberalism, is a 184-page book. However, this particular edition is 274 pages because it includes essays and an index. And I always, I always mention when there's an index because I love indexes. They're just, you, indexes in books are amazing. Um, the material of this book is paperback. It's printed by uh, Westminster Seminary Press, and it's printed and bound in Italy. And this particular volume is actually a gift to me from Westminster Seminary, so that was very cool. Um, so I believe it retails for $20. I'll see if I can find a link in the description down below. Um, but now I'm going to give some, just a brief history of uh, John Gresham Machen, who was born on July 28th of 1881 and died on January 1st of 1937. He was 55 when he died. Uh, Machen taught New Testament at Old Princeton uh, from 1906 to 1929, fighting liberal issues throughout his entire time at Princeton, but the biggest pushback in 1920. He left and founded Westminster Theological Seminary, Pennsylvania. Um, it's so sad what happened at Princeton, the, the, the fact that they went so liberal. Same thing in the PCUSA, um, Presbyterian Church in the USA. Um, but you look back at the, the beasts of Princeton. You have Charles Hodge, A.A. A. Hodge, B.B. Uh, B. Warfield, and the list goes on and on of these just beasts of theology, beautiful biblical doctrine. Uh, and theology coming out of there, and then all of a sudden they just went went liberal and lost all focus and sense of the gospel. Um, but Gresham Machen held on, and uh, he was willing to lose his job and leave and leave everything uh, for the sake of the gospel. Um, he also played a huge role in the founding of the OPC, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church, in 1936. Uh, during his transition from the PCUSA into what was soon to become the OPC, he wrote the book, Christianity and Liberalism. Uh, Machen was a son to a 45-year-old Episcopalian and a 29-year-old Presbyterian. His mother taught him the Westminster Shorter Catechism from an, a young age, and he died of pneumonia in 1937. He was buried at Greenmount Cemetery in Baltimore. Um, so now I'm going to dive into the book review proper. And the first thing I'm going to do is just read the contents of the book. And uh, in this particular edition, you have a foreword by Peter A. Lilback, um, an introduction to the Legacy Edition, which is this volume, by David B. Garner. That's what I quoted from earlier. Uh, acknowledgments, a preface, and then Machen's introduction. Doctrine, uh, God and man, the Bible, Christ, salvation, and the church. In all of which, Machen is responding, he's saying, responding to the liberal side and, and saying, here's what the Bible actually says, and here's what the liberal side is saying, and here's why we need to fight back and push back against this. And then in this edition, it includes the legacy, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the essays by the faculty of Westminster Theological Seminary, and it contains an essay by every single professor at Westminster Seminary, which is just extremely cool. Um, so, they were all very insightful, all very helpful. They added to the book, but 
if you just want to read the book, the book itself, as I mentioned earlier, is very short. It's only 184 pages. Um, so it's much easier to read than this book. Um, <clears throat> two particular uh, essays in this volume that I found helpful were actually by two of the professors that I know myself. Dr. Chad Van Dixhorn, um, who uh, has been extremely kind to me over the last year, um, he has a great essay. His is the first in the book. And then also John Curry, who um, he actually preached a sermon at my church, which was a huge blessing. Um, and both of them were very good in this book. So I just was going to highlight those two. Um, so are there any better books? And I'm rushing mainly because <laughs> rushing to get through this review because I'm afraid my camera is going to die and I don't want to not finish the review. But are there any better books on this topic? Uh, not that I'm aware of. This is a very unique book, and Machen does a great job at addressing the issues of liberalism and um, the damning beliefs to which it holds. Um, truly, they're damning. You will not go to heaven believing this false gospel, and Machen makes that so clear. And he uses the scripture to, to, um, to prove that. So would I buy this book? Yes. Every Christian ought to read this book because of its topic and the necessity of it even today, and I'm going to read some quotes from the book here in a moment, and you'll see how applicable this is to today's life and today's churches, uh, even though it's 100 years old. Um, though it looks at everything through a Presbyterian lens, it would still be helpful and very useful uh, to any Christian in any denomination. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and read some quotes from the book uh, to give an idea of both what's in the book and how important this book could be for a Christian today. So on page 27, he says, Christ died. That was history. Christ died for our sins. That is doctrine. Without these two elements, you joined in an absolutely indissoluble union, or joined in an absolutely indissoluble union. There is no Christianity. I had a typo in there. My apologies. It is not enough, this is on page 43, to know that Jesus is a person worthy of trust. It is also necessary to know that he is willing to save or to, to have us trust him. And it's not enough that he saved others. We need to know that he also has saved us. On page 44, Christian doctrine lies at the roots of faith. And I'll say this later, probably, but I was pushed back by a brother and a sister in Christ recently, telling me that I had too much knowledge, too much doctrine. I cared too much about theology. And this is such a good reminder. You can't have faith without doctrine. For Christian doctrine lies at the root, the very roots of faith. Page 47. Here is found the most fundamental difference between liberalism and Christianity. Liberalism is altogether in the imperative mood, while Christianity begins with a triumphant indicative. Liberals appeal, appeal to man's will, while Christianity announces first a gracious act of God. On page 65, he says, At the very root of the modern liberal movement is the loss of the consciousness of sin. The consciousness of sin was formerly the starting point of all preaching, but today it is gone. How many churches today do you attend where the word sin is not even mentioned in the sermon? And they shy away from the idea of sin because they don't want to offend people. It's liberal. It's rotten. And, and it's not the gospel. Page 81, he says, Christianity is founded upon the Bible. It bases upon the Bible both its thinking and its life. Liberalism, on the other hand, has its found, is founded upon the shifting emotions of sinful men. And again, I ask, how many churches do you attend today where the Bible seems to be a secondary source? It seems to be something that they might appeal to if they can't figure it out by their own feelings, their own thoughts. It's horrible. And again, it's not the gospel. And Machen just does a fantastic job presenting these things. He talks about them boldly. He doesn't shy away from them. And it's the same things that we're seeing now in our churches that need to be addressed 
and need to be called out. Page 89, he says, The truth is that if Jesus be merely an example, he is not a worthy example, for he claimed to be far more. And of course, this is a, an extent of liberalism that we don't see, for the most part, in, in uh, the Christian church today at large. Um, and that is that, you know, Christ is not even God. Um, they'll, they'll just say he's an example, something someone we should follow. Um, and Machen here is saying, if he was just an example, he's not worthy to be an example, for he claimed to be much more, meaning he's a liar. If he, It's much like what C.S. Lewis said. Um liar, lunatic, or lord. Um, page 89, he, or 98, rather, he says, the imitation of the real Jesus will never lead a man astray. Again, so important today. We just don't see that kind of conformity. We don't see that kind of willingness to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. It's even called legalism in some of these churches. Um, when a man gives up something or refuses to do something for imitating Christ. Page 138, he says, Religion cannot be made joyful simply by looking on the bright side of God. For a one-sided God is not a real God, and it is the real God alone who can satisfy the longing of our soul. God is love, but is he only love? God is love, but is love God? Seek joy alone, then. Seek, at, seek joy at any cost, and you will not find it. Again, I point to our modern churches. What do we see? We see, oh, God is, he's love. God is love. And that's the only thing that the churches want to talk about. It's the only thing the churches want to preach. But it's not God. If God is only love, it's not God. It is a false God. It's a made-up God. And it will send you to hell. Again, Machen calls these things out. He makes them very clear. And he says, this is what the Bible actually teaches on these. Page 144, Machen says, At the beginning of every Christian life, there stands not a process, but a definite act of God. A definite act of God. And then page 146, he says, Faith is being exalted so high today that men are being satisfied with any kind of faith just so it is faith. It makes no difference what is believed, we are told, just so the blessed attitude of faith is there. The undogmatic faith, it is said, is better than the dogmatic, because it is pure faith. Faith less weakened by the alloy of knowledge. See, there's that catch again, where I was accused of, of being, um, I suppose, uh, yeah, Weak, I had weak faith, I suppose, for my um, knowledge and my dogmatism, um, but only what the Bible says. Um, only what the Bible says. Uh, page 166, this is a really great paragraph here, and this is on the church. He says, but for another reason, also, the effort to sink doctrinal differences and unite the church on a program of Christian service is unsatisfactory. It is unsatisfactory because in its usual contemporary form, it is dishonest. Whatever may be thought of Christian doctrine, it can hardly be denied that honesty is one of the weightier matters of the law. Yet honesty is being relinquished in wholesale fashion by the liberal party and many ecclesiastical bodies today. And once more, <laughs> I will point back to our modern contemporary churches, the ones that only want to focus on relationship with Jesus Christ, which is good, and service to the community, which is also good. But they get that out of focus and it becomes false. It's a lie. They don't even live the truth for the sake of unity and standing together. And I apologize for being in such a negative mood today. The book itself is excellent. <laughs> um, and again, Machen truly points out and he, he calls these things out and he doesn't shy away from the truth. And I wish that more Christians today would stand up like Machen, myself included. I pray for a backbone like Machen. Um, I pray for 
greater conformity to Christ. He, he himself flipped tables um, and caused a lot of disturbance. Um, and yeah, so the book is great. Um, and I highly recommend it to anyone who is um, looking how to respond to liberalism and uh, truly what the effects of liberalism are and how deep they go, like the roots go into our churches today. So that, I believe, is all I have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed, let me know in the comments down below. I always love hearing from you. And uh, I believe that is all. Thanks so much for watching. Lord willing, I'll see you again very soon. God bless.